My name is Violet Joniker. I'm the pastor of Brook Road United Methodist Church, and I've been serving here since 2018. Brook Road is so proud to be a recipient of a grant from the United Way of Rock River Valley that has allowed us to hire a literacy coordinator who has supported community programming. And one of the strengths of having a number of different partners here in the building, from uh, AA to Zumba, we like to say, is that we have trusted relationships with a lot of neighbors and organizations here so that when we introduced a literacy program, we already had a strong base of families and young people to invite to that. It's been wonderful to see them inviting friends and seeing that uh, program grow. So we're really grateful to United Way for investing in that initiative here in Southeast Rockford. Reader's Night In is a monthly program where kids are invited to come and hear from trusted adults to have books read to them. And it is a really special thing to have grown-ups in your life who pay attention to you, to support you, who ask questions of you and how you're doing, and spend that close time reading a book. There are many kids in this neighborhood who are from big families or families with working parents who uh, may or may not have the time that they would like to have to be able to read books to their kids. So to have um, uh, another trusted adult in your life who's spending that time with you uh, does give the gift of uh, increasing literacy, but also gives uh, additional gifts of self-esteem and um, feeling good about who you are, to know that there's somebody looking out there for you. Our Reader's Night In, the kiddos come around five o'clock and they all come into our hall downstairs and we start with dinner and updating everybody on what we're gonna be doing. And then we start off right away with an adult-led reading session and we tackle our social emotional topic for the month, um, which is really wonderful. And that book is the specific book that they're gonna take home with them on top of the other free ones that they choose. And we have library kits that we get from the library that have lots of different learning opportunities in there. And we have different age groups that we have. We also have our Vox books that are set up so the kids can have a seat in the lounge area and take their books and listen to them for a little while. And then we always do a craft that coincides with our um, theme for that month, which is really wonderful. And then we do more adult-led stories, which is really great to see the kids just congregating together in a pile. And we have the opportunity to have wonderful volunteers that come and read to the kids. And the story time is so fun. And they're so enthused and into it. It's wonderful to see them. Looking at it from the perspective of the adult volunteers, I have watched uh, some of our adult volunteers be so proud of some of the younger kids who are learning to read and learning to sound things out. And the delight that these little kids have had in seeing someone be proud of them and celebrate them and praise them. There are so few spaces in our society today where we have those authentic intergenerational relationships. And so to get to center that around literacy is good for everybody. We know the importance of literacy and we have many immigrants and refugees here also who can't read or write in English and we have the opportunity to connect to them and teach them those basic resources and then connect with the schools and things like that too to bring those opportunities forward for them. We have a lot of folks who are uh, young students in the schools but whose parents speak a language other than English at the home. So for folks to be trying to learn the language of their family and learn English, we just wanted to be able to support those kids and those families especially as much as we can because we have such a love for neighbor and uh, it's led to some really beautiful and wonderful relationships. It was a specific night where we had 26 children. It was our largest group that we've had. Um, and more than half of the children could not speak English. And then we had the other half who could. And um, I had walked into the room and everybody was playing. And it was almost this like quiet play. And it was such a magical moment because you could not tell that these children could not completely communicate with each other with language, but they were communicating with each other um, and they were in these books. And that night is really just about 
having that safe and consistent space to come, learn the importance of literacy and what we're doing and the doors that it can open for them, and then also building those relationships, not only with their friends, but with books. Giving that opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one time where they're learning how to treat books, learning how to utilize them, they're um, learning how to um, love and respect them and they gain that every time they come back you can see the skills that they have learned you can see the um, relationship with reading that continues to develop every time they come back and it's really beautiful to see the consistency with the families and the parents understanding that this is actually making a difference not only just for them to build relationships and friendships but they're taking books home they're learning the importance of why we want to sit down and read even if they don't have the language yet they have these this access now that creates the opportunity for them to want to sit down and start learning about reading and the ones that can they have these books and they're taking home and the parents are reading to them and they have the opportunity to expand it just not beyond you know beyond what we're doing here at Brook Road. So when United Way talks about changing this culture of literacy I think even for those of us who are coming from backgrounds where reading was really normalized um, this campaign is helping all of us increase that more so I've been reading Reading more to my kids because of this program. I've been encouraging my friends and the grown-ups that I know to read more to the kids in their lives. Um, and so I have been really impacted by this about the intentionality of it, is saying that reading doesn't just happen and a love of reading uh, requires readers around you. So I've been spending more time reading with my kids. Um, here at the church, we have put uh, various book nooks in throughout the building now. So we have a fellowship time after church on Sundays. There's now books on the kids' table that they pick up and read. Because we have a book nook downstairs in the basement, anytime there's programming down there, the kids have a book space to go over to. And so I have watched, as we've done different programs um, that are church-related programs in the community, community center space, because of the book nooks that exist here now, kids are spending less time on their phones and more time reading books just because the books are physically present. And the adults here, myself included, are starting to be more intentional about saying, well, let's get out a book and read this together. We developed a reader's interest survey to not only find out the interest of reading in general at home, but where our kids are coming from, um, you know, what grade they're in, that kind of stuff. And then we went through and we asked, you know, how, what is your interest level in reading? How often are you reading at home? What else do you want to learn here? And we did a survey, um, we did six months. So we did the initial when they first started with Reader's Night In, and then six months later, we did a secondary survey. And one of the things that was super incredible to see in the data was that um, the interest level and the time spent reading at home went up. Um, and so when they did their second round, um, we, we had um, such a difference in our bar graphs of, of how interested they are and how many minutes they're reading at home and we broke it up from none to over an hour um, and we, we seen a difference of them um, from coming regularly. United Way has made it possible for us to live out a program that really was a dream before. We did not have the resources to put some of these programs together and to resource staff and material costs for these books and somebody to create them and to go to all the trainings that it takes to put together the um, marketing materials for these. So to be able to have our uh, literacy specialist, Kristen, here doing all of that work has definitely broadened our ability to have kids reading in this building, to promote that in all different kinds of ways, and to resource all the grown-ups that are in and out of this building about how to bring more reading into their lives. And those programs would not be possible without United Way.